the Big Ten just continues to it, it, so so what has happened with this college football season? We all knew how the sausage was made anyway, right? I've been saying it ever since we started this show four years ago that the college football playoff is a TV show. It's a sham. They want the biggest names possible because they sold this thing to ESPN and they need the biggest ratings possible so that they can sell advertisements to the highest bidders, blah, 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 all that kind of mess, right? We, we've talked about this multiple times and it is incredibly frustrating because we, we enjoy football, period. We enjoy the small schools, the big schools, whatever. We just like good football and we like giving a chance to the little guys. Uh, we think that the college football playoff should be uh, deserved and not just based on, eh, well, they look like the best team, right? And that's the biggest thing here is eye test has become such a big part of this. If you read Gary Barta's comments or heard them last night uh, on the CFP ranking show, if you heard them on uh, or, or read the, the transcript that is out there now, he basically said, well, you know, Texas A&M has played a lot of games, but Ohio State just looks like the better team right now. Um, you know, eventually, if Ohio State doesn't get more games in, yeah, it, we, we may have to go that direction. But through what we have seen, Ohio State looks like the better team. They've played four games. The only team with a pulse that they have played put up 500 passing yards on them, and that was Indiana. And now you're not going to get to see what Indiana is for the rest of the season with Michael Penix because he's out. So they're not going to hold that against Ohio State. They're just going to assume that Indiana would have beaten everybody else on the schedule. So here is what Barry Alvarez said um, today about the Big Ten possibly having to reconsider its requi- excuse me requirements for championships uh, with OSU in mind from a conversation with the Detroit News. He said uh, on if they need to take a look at at changing the requirements for the Big Ten title game, he said, I would think that if something would happen to Ohio State and they'd have to cancel another game, that that's something that we've got to revisit. They're sitting up there, still ranked number four. Our league can't keep them from having the opportunity if they have a chance to be in the finals. So then he was asked, is that an AD-level decision? He said, yeah, we meet weekly. Those are things we discuss. We may make some adjustments on that last week. That's sort of a flexible week of scheduling. But those are things we talk about, and certainly you've got to consider or reconsider. What the hell are we even doing? The ACC just did this, right? We talked about this on the SBR show yesterday because it was a big news flash. The ACC came out and said, all right, we're doing 10-game schedules, and you can do one non-conference game. So everybody's going to get 11 games. If you can't quite get 11, that's fine, but we want to make sure we have a full schedule. And then they come out this week because Clemson decided they don't want to go back to Tallahassee Because they are the big dogs in the conference. They said, we're not going back down there. Rather than trying to schedule something else for them, they just said, you know what? Rather than take the risk of of an injury or one of you guys uh, shit in the bed, we're just going to say, you don't have to play next weekend. And that way, we've got Notre Dame and Clemson in the ACC championship game, and we are guaranteed a playoff spot, and we don't have to worry about it. I am so tired of this because what this is is the leaders coming up with rules to start things off until the rules don't fit their narrative or what they want to happen. So when something goes sideways and their big dogs can't get in using the rules that they have created, I would just screw the rules. I am so irritated about this. Chris, I know you're irritated as well. I'm going to let you have the floor, but it's, it's so frustrating to see this from from supposed leaders of conferences, but we all know what it is. It's a sham. It's a TV show. They want ratings. That's Ohio State is getting, they're getting in the playoff one way or another. We got to stop hiding behind ratings. We have to. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you who the ratings king is. Okay. Let me, let me explain how ratings works. There's an industry out there that's ran pretty ineptly, by the way, like they're, they're not, they're not a well-ran organization called the NFL. They're playing right now on Wednesday afternoon. All right. Because they can't get their shit together either. But let me let me let me explain how ratings work for them. Okay. They would play a Sunday afternoon game on a rando Sunday in October at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. Between the Cowboys and the Packers. And it will outrate the SEC championship game. It will outrate any playoff game we have, it will outrate the national championship game. And it's just a rando game 
on a Sunday. Okay? So you want to sell your soul to the ratings? How is it that this lowly, small-town, upstart team from middle-of-nowhere Wisconsin can bring that kind of a number? How is that possible? It's because the NFL said, we think that competition and parity are the most important thing. We think fairness is the most important thing. Would we love every game to be New York and Dallas? Absolutely. That would, that would be the, the, the dream of all dreams. But we understand that we can't make certain things happen. And by allowing every team equal opportunity to rise and fall over the decades, they built a monster fan base for this small town, little bitty dinky market football team. Okay. That's how you build ratings. But the college football has said, no, 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 no. See, we've got these six big horses that run college football and we have to have our championship and we have to have our playoffs run around them. And if one of them aren't in it, holy shit, everything is on fire. And, and, and we have to have, the championship game be two of them. We we can have at least three of them in and let a, another guy get in every now and then if they've earned the right to be there. But man, we we got to do everything in our power to keep these six or seven big boy teams afloat because they're the only ones that pull eyeballs. What if you start letting the chips fall where they may don't manipulate rules. Don't manufacture wins for teams. Don't benefit the big boys that already have all the other benefits in the world. They already get the best coaches. They already have the best players. They, because we don't have some type of draft system. They already have the best facilities. They already have the most fans. Have you ever thought that if you put these other teams on national TV more often and you don't bury them on the U that they will then in time get more fans. They will then in time get bigger. Have you ever, have you ever thought of that? And then you no longer have to sell your soul to anybody. And you can just say, we're going to let the chips fall where they may in any team that gets in, we're going to have great ratings. You know why? Because we've built up all of these programs instead of selling our soul to these few. Yeah. But no, 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 we sell our soul to these few and, and it, it drives me insane. It infuriates me. And I fully believe, listen, this is the first year that these players realize for the first time in the history of college sports, we have more power than these administrations. We have more power than these administrations. The little guys are learning. There's a lot of us and they need us. I'm telling you, that's going to transition up at some point in time. If, if you're the other 13 teams in the SEC and you're tired of that Alabama cock in your ass, at some point in time, you're going to realize, I don't need that. I don't need that. We'll walk away. We'll start our own thing. You, Clemson, Ohio State, good luck playing each other. Oh, yeah, nobody will play Liberty. You can play those bastards. All right, now see how you like it. You can't take too much. Every partnership has to have – it's some type of equalness to it. You can't just say I'm the king and I must be treated as the king and I must be treated separately because at some point in time, the subjects get tired of being the subjects. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't, I could not have put that any better myself. Uh, LA Lakers 2020 champion said, yo, what it is guys. Um, let's see who else jumped in there. Oh, the Brown Yeti. It's been a little, it's been a little while since we saw the Yeti in here. Uh, Casey said, just expand to eight teams. I don't understand why they don't want eight teams. Uh, it's more games, more money, and there is definitely eight teams every year worthy of the playoff stage. See, all right, so I don't know that there's eight teams worthy. I think that there are eight we teams We got to stop the worthiness, it. Gary. I know. That's we got to fucking stop it. I understand that. What I'm saying is there are eight teams that are deserving of being on that platform. Now, we all know every year it's basically two teams that are ahead of the rest of the pack. And it's a different combination, right? Last year, it was LSU and Ohio State and Clemson. It was three of them last year. Uh, in some cases, it's just been Alabama and Clemson. In one year, it was, you know, it, it's it's never Oklahoma. But Oklahoma deserves to be in there because they win their conference every year and they dominate during the regular season. It, it's the same thing with the group of five teams. No, I don't think that Cincinnati would beat most of these top four teams. I just, I don't. But they deserve the opportunity. That's where I'm at with it. Like, I, I have become a proponent of a 16-team playoff because that way you get all of the automatic qualifiers in 
and you bring in everybody else. If the top four teams are the top four teams, well, then they can prove it, and they can go win. Like, that that's my deal. But this whole thing this season, I understand why these conferences are doing everything in their power to get their guys in the playoff, because the playoff payout is more money. They want more money because they have all taken a bath this year because they didn't have the uh, the wherewithal to look ahead. They didn't have the they they want their uh, their nonprofit right. They want their tax exemption. They want all that. I'm I'm so irritated that it's just out in the open. Like I'm I'm glad it's out in the open, but to come out and say this is unbelievable. Like for the love of God, when you make a rule, just stick to it. Like the playoff, they're not even, they're not even hiding it anymore. We don't the, even. We the playoff don't even hide has, it has anymore. said. I mean, it, it, look, they're the playoff every year. The justification that they make every season just fits whatever they want the narrative to be. If they want Alabama to be in as a non-champion, well, then they just switch it up to the eye test. And it's, it's the same thing when Ohio State was a non-champion and Penn State was a two-loss team. Well, we can't have a team that got blown out by Michigan, uh, you know, in the second game of the year. Well, I don't know, but, but they know, did, that year they didn't want UCF in. They wouldn't let UCF join in. They oh, were that was, undefeated, and they passed the eye test. Then they said, "Oh, but look at your strength of schedule." Oh, but yeah, nobody it, wanted whatever to look the at Clemson's. They, yeah. but nobody wanted to look at Clemson's strength of schedule. Yeah, it's it's like, all justification. Like no, yeah. So we we want to make this argument right here because it defends this team, and then we want to change the argument to change this team, and then we want to because this year they're going to say the same thing. They're going to look at BYU and say, "Well, look who you've played," and then they're going to say, "Well, look at Ohio State." Well, who the hell have they played? They played three nobodies, three sped teams. Okay. The only thing that would surprise me this season would be if we do not have Alabama, Ohio State, and Notre Dame in this playoff. That's the only thing that would surprise me. Now, Clemson, I think if Notre Dame loses by, by by three touchdowns, let's say, which I don't think is going to happen, if Notre Dame gets beat up and beat up pretty good, there's a world where they get kicked out of this thing. I I don't think so. I don't think that they put in Texas A&M over Notre Dame. Now you're probably right. Because at, at that point, Alabama would – so here's the way that it would work. If Florida beats Alabama, obviously Florida's in. But then they'll keep Alabama in as well. Like – that's the, but that's the world where Notre Dame gets left out. Yeah, that that's the world where Notre Dame gets left out. But that's because Florida jumps in. So if Clemson and, loses again, somebody said, "What if Clemson? If Clemson loses again, they're out. Yeah, they, they're, they don't they're get done. to play as a two-loss team. Notre Dame's probably one or two. Alabama's one or two. If they win the SEC, um, if they lose the SEC, then you know. Now, now if Clemson does lose, then I do think we're getting a one-loss A and M team in. No, no question. Yeah, if if Clemson loses. That moves Ohio State up to three. Yeah, probably going to get A&M. It, so long as they go undefeated the rest of the way. Um, and I fully expect them to. I mean, it's not like they got a tough schedule to close out. But that's the thing, right? Is, is We are having this conversation, and the fact that Ohio State could play four or five games, and that's it. And so far, they are ranked number four with only four games played, and the only one of which was against a team with a pulse and they only won by seven, and their defense looked atrocious. Their their quarterback threw three interceptions in this game. Yep. Oh, but wait a minute. I thought we were going to use the eye test. It, but but apparently. Oh, they, no, hang on. What about strength of schedule? How are we going to use that? Let's use the strength of schedule. Oh, we're not using that either? No, can't, what can't, qualifications can't, can't, are we using for Ohio State? Uh, Phil Stills Preview Magazine. That's got to be it. That's the only thing that you can say. Like it, that How in, do these sons of bitches sleep at night? That's all I want to know. Uh, in their very expensive mansions with their very expensive beds on their very expensive pillows. Uh, I hope they making, die. Making I really them, do. The oh world's a better God. place without them. It I really see. is. I know there's, their families will be sad. Tough shit. People die every day. They make the world a worse place. It's, they just do. Yes. It's, uh, I'm, I'm with you. I wouldn't go so far as to say I hope they die. I know because but I, like, because let's, you let's, and I think differently, and I see, I see this world as just, just a meaningless place sometimes anyway. It's, and and death is just the next great adventure. So <laughs> I I'm I'm so irritated with it. I it, it drives me insane because you would like to think there's a little bit of integrity but uh, there's not. that there there's are not. at least and some before ethics. now before now they they all were doing the same things they're doing right now. The problem is is COVID, this weird ass 2020 year and the weird scheduling 
it, it's all exposing them for who they are. And if we won't stand up and cry out and, and, and shout them down and, and fight them now, when the hell will we? Because they've been doing the same shit over and over and over again. And all they do is let the outcome justify what they've done. Oh, well, look how good LSU was. Look how good Alabama was. Look how good Clemson was. Look how good Ohio State shouldn't have got in that one playoff. But they got in, and then they won it. So, well, well we deserve to be there. See, that's, the end doesn't justify the mean. Agreed. Like, I, I don't understand having contracts for bowl games. I don't understand uh, all these different things, right? Because there's there's a chance that Liberty – uh, could go nine and two, ten and one, you know. So I, I would fully expect that they get beat this weekend. But that team could go ten and one this year and not be able to go to a bowl game because the NCAA knocked out all the qualifications for the bowl games. Have you seen the bowl predict, uh, predictions at all? Like no, uh, because I don't it, look at any of that shit. So you Brett, know I hate it. I know, I know. But Brett McMurphy is is in the know. He talks to all these guys. He talks to these different bowl games and the scouts for them and who they are working with to bring to their bowl games. LSU is in talks to go to a bowl game, and Liberty wouldn't be able to get in. Like, what world are we in right now? Tennessee. They're talking about Tennessee for the Music City Bowl. What Tennessee may have two wins this year. Like, what are we doing? But it's because they're part of the SEC, and there's no qualifications for bowl games. So, and that's not to say that Tennessee is going to even accept because they may just be ready to be done with the season. But like I, these teams that deserve a little more notoriety, a little more uh, spotlight on them, they don't get it. Like it's part of what I enjoy about College Game Day, right? I love that Felica and that bunch. They at least have the stones to go to a place like Coastal Carolina and Liberty, right? Like, they may not showcase the game, uh, like on ESPN. They might not put it at the right time slot or on the right channel because they need their ratings. But Felica and them don't have any say in that. They got no rating. They got no say in that. But they can decide what game is the biggest in the weekend, and they can go where they want to go and spotlight a team that's on the rise. They that's can right. help give a little more spotlight to those teams, and I love that. However, they're going to a game, and Thomas Lee jumps in. Yeah, it's, it's all about money, and that's the problem. That is the issue here. Kirk Herbstreit went on a, a diatribe uh, on a Michigan radio station this morning, and obviously he apologized for his statements about Michigan, you know, trying to wave the white flag and duck the Ohio State game because they don't want to get beat by 100 and all that. He said that on the air last night. I could not believe he said it. And then he walked it back and whatever. I get it. But it, it, it doesn't make it any less true. There are teams that are absolutely quitting on the season, and they don't want to get embarrassed. And that it is what it is. But when you give players – and teams the option to do that, who in their right mind would have thought they wouldn't use it? Like, my gosh. So but he went on his diatribe, and he said, look, I'm more just upset about the state of college football. He said, we've got players that, that don't look at this as an opportunity. They look at this as, hey, you know, we're not going to win anymore, so like, might as well go on and get ready for the NFL. It, they're not looking at this as a 20, 30, 40-year long-term investment. They're not looking at taking the lessons from being on a team. Regardless whoa, 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 whoa. of what the adversity is. I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there. Two things. One, I love I love Kurt. I love Kurt. Lo he's one of the the best things about the sport. He's also part of the problem as well. Yes. Okay? Because he sees the big name teams and he puffs them up and he dismisses the little guys just as much as anybody else does. Okay. But but the problem is, is you know, you know the teams that aren't quitting? You know the players that aren't quitting and opting out? The BYU's Sunbelt. players, Coastal's players, Liberty's players, the Sunbelt kids, all these kids, uh, they're not quitting on their teams. No, 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 no. No, they're, they're still fighting. UCF has nothing to fight for. That team is still fighting like hell to score points every week, every time the, the game is snapped. Cincinnati knows that they have nothing to play for because these sons of bitches won't let them in. No matter what they do, no matter how good they are, they won't allow them at the table. But they're still fighting like hell, and they're not quitting. They're not quitting. These guys have nothing to play for, and they're still not quitting. You know who does quit? All those big boys, all those blue bloods, your Penn State, your LSUs, your, all those big guys, and as soon as they realize, eh, it's not what we thought it was going to be, so let's walk away. Those guys don't have any clue on how to face adversity, and you know why? Because they've been given every advantage that they've ever had in this sport. Maybe yeah. not in life, but most of these kids come from real tough backgrounds. 
But when it comes to football, they've always been the best player on the best team, and they've never lost. And they don't understand what that's like. And it's shame on college football, shame on the entire system. This is what we're talking about for always giving them the advantage, for always giving them the best of everything and puffing them up. This is the problem. Let leave us uh, leave, leave Ohio State out and let USC get in one time. Let them get their shit kicked in. That's fine. It's okay to go up there and and show up and get beat. That's all right. Notre Dame did it. Notre Dame's done it a bunch of times. They've played teams way better than them several times, and they got the hell beat. They got embarrassed. You know what? They're still showing up. And guess what? After four or five years, six or seven years of getting embarrassed by those teams, they now are, are kind of equal with those teams. Yeah. Oh, imagine that. Imagine that. We let them in. And we beat the shit out of them. And everyone says, well, they didn't belong to begin with. Yes, they did belong. They just weren't as good as the other team. But after getting there so many times, they learn what they need to do different to compete with these teams and to get better. Let UCF in. And if they ever deserve to be there, let them in again. And then maybe the fourth or fifth time that they've gotten in, maybe they're a different kind of team. Maybe they've learned something, and the nation has seen them. Same thing with Cincinnati. If Cincinnati deserves to be in, let their ass in. Let them fight. Yes, give them the opportunity to do so. Like Bertie said, stop watering down Division I football. Create a 20-team true Division I league. Let them recruit on an evil play, or even playing field, and all the best kids are then recruiting, on those Recruiting 20 teams. is really what's like, killing college football. It really is. Yeah. I, I'm not of the opinion that, Kids should because they are going to get an education, regardless of how I kind of roll my eyes at that. I do think education is important. My education wasn't important. Oh, I, hey. I can't make my my life experience what everybody else's is. What we we have a little bit of breaking news. It's not breaking as of yet. Um, the so Liberty is still on a path to play the game Saturday, right? Okay. However, BYU and Coastal are in talks and have explored the possibility of playing Saturday if Liberty cannot play because of COVID-related issues. That's so amazing. So that could be cool. Uh, they, they need to find out if Liberty is going to be able to play because they, they, do have, they do have COVID-19 issues right now. At both um, the places I bet online right now, I can't find the Liberty Coastal game. No, it's, it's taken it's been, off the board. Yeah, it's been taken off the board. So that could be amazing. Yeah. That would yeah. be a lot of fun. But that's that's the thing, right? BYU's players haven't quit. But not only that, App State has nothing else to play for. They don't have. And they're still going to show up, and they're going to bring the wood Saturday. They didn't have anything to play for last Saturday. Yeah, and they still came out and whipped Troy's ass. Like they wanted to play, and Troy, who has had nothing to play for for weeks on uh, on end, they are still showing up. They are yeah. still doing their thing. There are so many of these teams that still give a damn that want to go out and compete. And that's the biggest thing. So there's some, obviously, that aren't. But there are still some that are, and I love those teams for doing it. Because that football is so much more important than just championships. Like, college football has always been more than just championships. That doesn't mean that I don't think that they should have a better system for it. I think that it means football is life. That's how this thing works. And for it to be just whittled down into this little thing that it is now where everybody just pays attention to the playoff, that's an issue. Like, if, if you're going to have it where everybody only talks about being able to get to the playoff, then you need a bigger playoff. You need... I've been I've been screaming this for years. Yeah, I know. I've been, I've been saying it for, for years and years and years that just because you can't win the championship doesn't mean you don't belong in the tournament. Every year, some a Butler is going to hang banners for making it to a Sweet 16 or making it to to an Elite or Final Four. Like LSU made it to a Sweet 16. They made it to one Final Four in my lifetime, and and they hung a banner for it. And it was an amazing season, and it was a great ride. Oh, but they didn't win the championship, so it didn't matter. No, it mattered. Yes. Why is it that one team out of 130 can win a title? You mean everybody else don't matter? Oregon last year, so there were a lot of fans that were uh, debating before they ended up getting beat by Arizona State. They were debating, would it be better for us to not make the playoff and just go to the Rose Bowl where we know that we've got a really good chance of winning, or do we want to go get our teeth kicked in by LSU? Like, which would be better? And it's always going to be, go play LSU. 
Like, go to the biggest stage possible because it helps your program long-term. And the players want that opportunity. They want to compete. And it doesn't matter who you're playing against. Like, Oregon didn't get to play for a national championship last year because they lost to Arizona State. That's perfectly fine. They still went out and competed against Wisconsin. Like, it, that, it, it drives me insane thinking about this stuff. Thomas jumps in. He said, you guys are the only ones talking about this. Respect. Hey, we just call it like we see it. Well, share you know? it out. Tell everybody else that you know to come listen to it because I, I don't know what else to do. I don't hear anybody else saying it. And no. I say some pretty harsh shit, okay? Do I do, I don't know any of these people, so it's so it's a pretty huge dick move to say I wish they'd all die. I just think the world's a better place without assholes. I just do. I totally and I understand think these it. guys are the biggest assholes in the world. The, so a, a lot of times that I will uh, I will talk about the reality of the situation. I'll talk about who is likely going to get into the playoff. That is based on the uh, the circumstances and what we know the playoff to be. Like uh, we're talking about Herb Street puffing up teams and whatnot, not ranking uh, uh, G five teams and all that. Uh, a lot of that is because the playoff committee has done this year after year after year. So you're trying. Even even if you're not meaning to, in the back of your head, you're trying to match what they are going to do, right? You're trying to predict. Even when you should be just giving out your opinion on the best teams, you're still trying to predict who is actually going to be able to make it and who's not. And that's that's where we, you and I sometimes get crossways with this because sometimes I am just trying to predict what they're going to do. Even if I don't believe it's the right thing to do, I still find myself trying to predict what they will end up doing, and it, I don't care. I'm not in the prediction business. I'm gonna I'm gonna make games. I'm gonna pick games, but but I'm not in the prediction business. I'm gonna tell you what I think. I'm gonna tell you what's right, and I'm gonna tell you what's wrong. Yeah, that's it. That's I can only tell you what I truly believe and what I truly feel. And my my problem is is the danger of doing what you're doing is I learned this definition thanks to some friends that are a lot smarter than us. That's the definition of gaslighting. Yes. You're saying what everybody else is saying, and now everybody is hearing it from all these different sources, and so now they believe it. And I refuse to be a part. I just refuse to be a part of it. Hey, it's uh, it's politics, right? But I'm not doing that. I'm not no, playing I know, that game. No, I know. But that's, that's what I'm saying is... And that's why I'll never be taken seriously because I say off-the-wall shit and I cuss too much. That's fine. I understand that. But I'm going to always at least tell you what I really feel. And this stuff bothers me. I find yep. it morally reprehensible. I really do. I'm not a moralist. I'm not. I, I, I don't judge people for anything that they do. But this is a sport in which the labor, the labor that's out there actually taking all of the risk right now are, are, are not paid. And these... Other entities are trying to screw certain kids. If you're Wake Forest this week, it, you know, you're you're pretty upset that you don't get your shot at Notre Dame when it was on the schedule. Do you think Wake Forest, when they saw the schedule this year, circled that game at the end of the year? Oh, it, so, well, they, it, so they were supposed to play earlier in the year, and Notre Dame had COVID issues. Yeah, whatever, and, whatever. But, they but that's the what Notre I'm Dame saying. Game. Yeah. That was a big deal for Wake Forest. Now Wake Forest is going to get screwed. All those kids that worked all hard all year – Dave Clawson has a shot at, at maybe a lottery ticket in his hand. You know, you go into that game and you upset Notre Dame. Now you can step up to You either make Wake Forest pay your ass or you can go take four or five million dollars from somebody else. OK, yeah. but that's a, that's a lottery ticket he's holding right now. And, and now the, the ACC just took that ticket and tore it up. They threw it away. You don't get that opportunity. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, kids at Wake. You don't get that chance. All those kids at, at Florida State. I, yeah, because you guys are not worth. It wasn't the kids' decision to not play yeah. Clemson. It wasn't the kids' decision. These were adults. These were administrators that had, had, had a say in it. The kids didn't have a chance. How many kids at Florida State just grew up hating Clemson the last several years? Just hating their ass, getting just destroyed by them. They want their shot at the king. Everybody yes. wants their shot at the king. Yep, but okay? but those players in those programs are not worth as much to the ACC yeah. as Clemson and Notre Dame this yeah. year. That's what it is. That's it. That's it. That's the – And we, but we get upset when, when, uh, when they cancel, when they, uh, when they opt out. And they don't want to go play for. Oh, how selfish of them to not go play for the bowl game! How selfish of them to to opt out and, and quit on their team. We call them, we call them quitters. Oh how yeah. How dare we? How how fucking dare we? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. We it's, used it's the absurd. shit out of these kids, and then we got the balls to call them quitters. Oh, that's that's some great a piece of shit right there. 
Yeah. Yeah. Now you're uh, you're right about that. Uh, Casey said, I take you seriously, Chris. I would rather watch a real show than a scripted one anyway. Uh, Thomas Lee said, my litmus test was 2014. TCU got jobbed. Even though Ohio State won it, TCU deserved to be there. The difference, Ohio State is the cash cow. Uh, yes. Casey said... Um, Oh, that TCU team was awesome, too. And that was a complete team with no stars. Oh, yeah. No, Just they, a complete, they were... well-rounded, great offense, great defense. The best team I've ever seen Gary Patterson have. Love that man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Birdie said, uh, let's see, can change, change can happen from the voice of a single man. Never underestimate uh, the true power of an opinion. True leaders have the courage to speak their truth. No, uh, much respect, Chris. Never apologize for an opinion. Yeah. That's no apologies here. Like we're, we're no. going to tell you exactly what we're thinking, but um, who? Yeah, I knew I knew we were going to get fired up about that. Michigan, by the way, uh, uh, the game against Maryland canceled today. Yeah. SMU Houston is canceled. Uh, that Michigan situation, they are not even allowed back to their facility until Monday, and they are supposed to play Ohio State next Saturday. So, uh, Ohio State's doing everything they can to get their game in this week. I mean, we'll see. Uh, Tyrone said, "What changes in the Big Ten? Oh, he just he just topped in. Tyrone, uh, the Big Ten is looking at changing their rules for who can get into the Big Ten title game based on the fact that uh, Ohio State may not have enough games. So, is what it is. Uh, another example of these conferences uh, doing whatever they can to help the bigger schools. 